Donald Trump running for and being elected president had a massive effect on many things, but especially he and his wife's relationship, from awkward hand-holding advances to awful anniversaries. Here's a rundown of Donald and Melania Trump's most cringe-worthy moments. Melania Trump's support of her husband's political career path has been subject to tons of speculation. In the scathing White House tell-all, Fire and Fury, author Michael Wolff writes that Melania cried non-joyful tears after finding out about Donald Trump's unexpected presidential win in 2016. This is something that was vehemently denied by Stephanie Grisham, the former First Lady's communications director, but strangely enough, during the actual inauguration, Mrs. Trump looked anything but pleased. Melania's morose Rose's expression was so obvious that the internet rushed to her aid with the hashtag Free Melania. In a clip that launched a thousand divorce rumors, Flotus grinned at POTUS, only to immediately frown the moment he turned back around. By this point in the night, Donald Trump had already ditched Melania to greet the Obamas. She had to suffer through an awkward greeting with Michelle, who seemed less than thrilled about her gift from Tiffany's, and her own son left her hanging on a high five. During the first dance, the newly inaugurated POTUS appeared noticeably stiff while Melania seemed to appear straight up miserable. He pulled her in at the waist and she seemed to lean back like a house cat who's totally over being pet. According to body language expert Susan Constantine, that analogy may not be too far off. In an interview with Mike, she said, Melania is an object to Trump. I don't see any warmth or true love and compassion in that relationship whatsoever. Things didn't get less awkward when the former first couple jetted over to Israel to meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and discuss moving the U.S. Embassy. We're not exactly sure what went down on Air Force One on the way there, but Melania clearly wasn't feeling very affectionate toward her husband by the time they landed. The incident went down as Netanyahu and his wife escorted then-President Donald Trump and Melania across the red carpet. Donald reached out to grab Melania's hand, and she swiftly smacked it away. It's true, your husband is supposed to be your life partner, but does that mean he's also your business partner? That appears to be the case for Donald Trump, who greeted his wife with the firm handshake of a fellow colleague in September 2017. By the time Trump arrived with his wife Melania at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland, she had already made it pretty clear that she's not into PDA. It seemed as though the former star of The Apprentice finally got the memo, because he greeted the former first lady with a handshake and awkwardly nudged her off stage after she introduced him to the crowd. The encounter was so strange that Twitter erupted with commentary, with many questioning whether Donald and Melania actually know each other at all. While we're certainly not behind the closed doors of Donald and Melania Trump's alleged separate bedrooms, it appeared that Melania finally appeased her husband's hand-holding advances during the state arrival ceremony in April 2018, if only for a moment. The first couple posed for a photo op next to French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife, Brigitte. Then Donald reached out to grab Melania's hand, and she eventually took it without even giving him a glance. As soon as the couple completed the photo op, Melania appeared to let go of Donald's grip and proceed to trail behind him. President Macron and Brigitte remained side by side for a bit. Some say Melania Trump is in a cold, loveless marriage, but what if that's just her personal aesthetic? If you're going by her White House Christmas decorations, that seems like the case. The former first lady is impossibly chic, even if her style isn't exactly the epitome of holiday cheer. It's not totally her fault. She didn't ask to be stuck in the White House on Christmas. Christmas stuff that, you know, who gives a f about Christmas stuff and decoration, but I need to do it, right? With this in mind, it's not really surprising she chose an elegant, understated palette. A palette that transformed into a hellscape ripped straight from the horror movie The Forest. Melania's take on Christmas in the White House was a far cry from the Obama's cozy classic decorations. Instead of stringing the hallway with garland and warm, twinkly lights, she opted for uplit bushels of stark white branches. The final results garnered her comparisons to the White Witch from the Chronicles of Narnia. Others compared the former flotus stoically watching the various Nutcracker-inspired ballerinas to Black Swan and The Ring. More than a decade of marriage is something to celebrate, but not for the Trumps. 
Their 13th wedding anniversary came and went with little fanfare in 2018. Perhaps the couple is just superstitious, or maybe Melania was absolutely furious. The Trumps reportedly intended to spend their anniversary weekend at a posh resort in the Swiss Alps that was hosting the World Economic Forum, at which the former president was scheduled to speak. Those plans were made before the Wall Street Journal dropped a bombshell news report claiming Donald paid adult film star Stormy Daniels $130,000 to remain quiet about an affair. They allegedly had a sexual encounter in July 2006, shortly after Melania gave birth to Barron. Soon after the story broke, CNN confirmed that Melania had canceled her trip to Switzerland and Donald attended the event alone. On the Obama's 25th anniversary, the former president gushed about his wife in a sweet tweet. The lovey-dovey statement sent fuzzy feelings to admirers across the nation back in 2012. On the flip side, there appeared to be nothing warm and fuzzy about the Trump's 13th anniversary. We do have to give Melania some credit. Two days before the big day, she did take the opportunity to reflect on her time as first lady. The strange thing? You'd never know her husband had anything to do with it. Melania tweeted a photo of herself along with her hunky military escort on Inauguration Day with this message. This has been a year filled with many wonderful moments. I've enjoyed the people I've been lucky enough to meet throughout our great country and the world. Amidst the Stormy Daniels drama, Melania Trump didn't limit her reported shade throwing to Twitter posts and canceled anniversary plans. Nope. The former first lady also opted to travel solo to her husband's State of the Union address on January 30th, 2018. In fact, the couple had not been publicly seen together since New Year's Eve. Though the State of the Union address is given just a few minutes away from the White House, the then first couple reportedly took separate cars, according to CNN. Melania arrived just one minute before POTUS's speech was supposed to begin. Even more curious, Melania opted to wear a white pantsuit to the event. The year prior, Democratic congressional members donned white in protest of then-President Donald Trump's policies. Maybe the First Lady has joined the resistance. But more likely, cream may be one of her wardrobe staples. According to then-Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, there was nothing shady about Melania's separate ride. She reportedly took her own car out of convenience. Donald Trump produced a rather cringeworthy interview when he took his executive time to call into Fox & Friends in late April 2018. The interview was shocking for a few reasons. The terrified looks from the anchors as they nervously tried to push him off air, the way he may have possibly incriminated himself in legal matters, and the moment he totally admitted that he forgot to get Melania a birthday present. Well, I better not get into that because I may get in trouble. Maybe I didn't get her so much. I'll tell you what, she has done. I got her a beautiful card. This begs the question, what's worse, the wrath of a wife whose birthday you forgot or potentially implicating yourself in an ongoing criminal investigation? Donald Trump clung to his reality TV catchphrase long after The Apprentice was canceled. His one-term presidency became notorious for its high turnover rate. By May 2018, more than 30 staff members had already reportedly been fired, forced out, quit, or retired. And it seemed like the world was always speculating about who would be next. Turns out, it could have been Melania Trump. According to W Magazine, the former president riffed on the fact that Melania looked miserable in an overwhelming amount of public appearances, saying, I like turnover. I like chaos. It really is good. Now the question everyone keeps asking is who is going to be the next to leave? Steve Miller or Melania? Basically, joking about how the general public thinks your wife hates you is as awkward as expected, especially considering the notoriously private former Flotus was apparently offended. Melania Trump may be very serious and reserved by nature, but that doesn't mean she never lets loose. The former first lady cracked a rare smile at Barbara Bush's funeral, and the irony was not lost on the internet. The then-president Donald Trump did not attend the service, but Melania was there to pay her respects. Instead of sitting by herself, she sat next to Barack and Michelle Obama. This was awkward in and of itself. It's even more awkward when you could possibly argue that Melania looked happier and more relaxed with the Obamas than she had in months while appearing alongside her husband. Online audiences adored Melania's perceived rare reprieve of misery. Even Hillary Clinton advisor Philippe Reynes took the time to tell the internet that Melania allegedly used to smile in photos. He added, That's a woman craving distance from a monster being reminded what dignity looks like. Melania Trump is a woman of great style. If only she had chosen a different day to wear a military-inspired parka that read, I really don't care. 
do you? Melania donned the jacket at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland on a very hot day. She was reportedly on her way to visit migrant children at the Texas-Mexico border amidst the public outrage for Donald Trump's family separation policy. Though she removed the jacket before her arrival in Texas, the former first lady gave press a clear view of the text. Her unfortunate choice of timing made it seem like she was referring to the more than 2,000 migrant children separated from their families at the border. According to ABC News, a spokesperson for Melania claimed there was not an intentional or hidden message in her sartorial choice. But the then-president took to Twitter to claim his wife's jacket referred to a certain members of the media, adding, Melania has learned how dishonest they are, and she truly no longer cares. In May 2018, Melania Trump launched an anti-bullying campaign called Be Best. According to CNN, the initiative was meant to stomp out cyberbullying, an issue plaguing children in today's social media-driven society. Many were quick to point out that it was an issue also plaguing Donald Trump's administration, and her husband was the one dishing it out. While Melania warned against harmful uses of social media, Donald was making news for calling former White House staffer Omarosa Manigault Newman derogatory names on Twitter, referring to her as both a dog and a lowlife. The dichotomy prompted CNN to ask if the then First Lady was trolling her husband. Melania pushed forward in August 2018 with a Be Best tweet, asking followers how they plan to be the best version of themselves in the upcoming school year. Her message was met with immense criticism, with users pointing out that what her husband was doing could be seen as potentially the exact kind of behavior she was campaigning against. Things got awkward in August 2018 when Melania's parents were sworn in as U.S. citizens using a policy that Donald Trump had vehemently denounced. Donald infamously spent a large swath of his time championing against illegal immigration and enacting a zero-tolerance policy. According to the New York Times, he also set his sights on legal immigration, more specifically what he considered, quote, chain migration. Per CBS News, family reunification, as it's officially called, allows adult green card holders and legal U.S. residents to sponsor a family member for immigration, the way Melania reportedly sponsored her parents. Donald Trump had been extremely vocal about his distaste for this family reunification policy. In November 2017, when Melania's parents were going through the immigration process, he tweeted, Chain migration must end now. Some people come in, and they bring their whole family with them, who can be truly evil. In August 2018, then-First Lady Melania Trump announced her first major solo international trip. According to The Standard, the focus of Melania's trip to Africa was to learn more about struggles endured by youth. The journey corresponded with her continued focus on children's well-being and her Be Best campaign. A few months prior to Melania's travel announcement, the former president reportedly used a derogatory word to describe Haiti, El Salvador, and Africa. Why do we want these people from, quote, all these countries here. This happened while discussing a bipartisan immigration deal. According to the Washington Post, Donald Trump supposedly wanted more immigrants from Norway and nations like it. Donald and Melania Trump certainly don't always present a united front when it comes to the former president's many beefs. In fact, she praised NBA superstar LeBron James for his charity work less than 24 hours after Donald attacked the famous baller on Twitter in 2018. According to CNN, the drama was sparked when newsman Don Lemon interviewed James about his contributions to his hometown of Akron, Ohio, including a public school the basketball player helped launch for at-risk third and fourth graders. The conversation ebbed towards the topic of Donald Trump, and James revealed that he believed the then-president had tried to use sports to divide Americans. The Donald then tweeted negatively about both men's intelligence. Less than 24 hours after Donald slammed the NBA star, a spokeswoman for the former first lady praised James' charity work, saying, It looks like LeBron James is working to do good things on behalf of our next generation. And just as she always has, the first lady encourages everyone to have an open dialogue about issues facing children today. Donald Trump had been at odds with the National Park Service since the beginning of his presidency. According to the Washington Post, nearly the entirety of the National Park Service advisory panel resigned in frustration over his administration. 
Think Progress reported that Trump proposed slashing nearly 2,000 park rangers at a time when park visitation was at an all-time high. He also announced plans to shrink Bears Ears National Monument by nearly 85 percent, the largest monument reduction in U.S. history. According to CNN, the Trump administration also temporarily shut down the National Park Service Twitter account after it allegedly depicted the size of the crowd at his inauguration in an unfavorable light. But then there's Melania Trump. On the 102nd anniversary of the National Park Service, Melania tweeted a photo and a special birthday message thanking the service for its work for the country. In the photo, she posed with members of the Park Service. Her husband was nowhere in sight. Donald Trump had a notoriously tumultuous relationship with late Senator John McCain, whose famous thumbs down helped topple his plans for an Obamacare repeal. And who can forget the time Donald reportedly disagreed with the majority opinion that the Arizona senator was a war hero. According to Politico, McCain spent more than five years in a North Vietnamese prison camp during the Vietnam War. He was brutally tortured but refused an early release because he didn't think it was fair to the other prisoners, who'd been there longer than he had. But according to Donald, he's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years he's a war PSW hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. When McCain died from brain cancer complications in August 2018, the White House reportedly drafted a statement for Donald, which heralded the senator as a hero. But that statement was never released, reported CNN. Instead, Trump opted for a short tweet that focused on the late senator's family. Only after being met with intense criticism did Donald appear to concede, issuing a lengthier statement that praised McCain for his service and ordered flags to be hung at half-mast. With the notable exception of the White House, other important locations had already lowered the flags, according to the New York Times. Melania Trump, however, promptly honored Senator McCain, uttering the very words her husband seems so loath to speak, thanking the senator for his service. Donald Trump's rivalry with Barack Obama began long before the billionaire was eyeing a presidential bid. The Donald previously criticized the former president for playing basketball and championed a conspiracy theory that claimed Obama wasn't an American citizen. When The Apprentice alum succeeded Obama, he promptly began trying to overturn some of his predecessor's most notable policies, reported Essence. It's not clear if he simply disagreed with Obama's policies or had a personal vendetta against the man. Donald reportedly even sought to overturn legislation that banned killing wolf pups in their dens. Whatever the reason, the former first lady didn't appear to share the same sentiment. From the outside, at least, it looked like Melania Trump may have been chummier with Obama online than she was with her own husband at the time. Donald's accounts made up two of the six she followed on Twitter. The others belonged to the White House Historical Association, Mike and Karen Pence, and Barack Obama. Curiously enough, Obama was the only person Melania followed who was not involved in her husband's administration. Melania Trump appeared to have a pretty good relationship with the Obamas during Donald Trump's administration. But before serving in the White House, she helped her husband champion what's arguably the most insane of all Barack Obama conspiracy theories, the birther conspiracy. In 2011, Melania went on The Joy Behar Show to defend her husband's claim that Obama wasn't born in the United States despite the fact that he released his short-form birth certificate in 2008. The future first lady claimed that she and Donald felt like the short-form birth certificate released by the White House was different from an actual birth certificate, saying, It's not only Donald who wants to see it, it's American people who voted for him and who didn't vote for him. They want to see that. About a week later, the White House released Obama's long-form birth certificate, which clearly showed he was born in the state of Hawaii. Years later, Donald finally admitted Obama was born in America but he allegedly continued to peddle the conspiracy privately, according to the New York Times. For a brief moment in 2018, hashtag Missing Melania was a pop culture enigma. Ben Flotus Melania Trump has always been an elusive creature with a reserved nature. Few have peered behind her stoic gaze, but the short period in which she reportedly went missing was a whole new type of mysterious. Vanity Fair even published a complete timeline from the moment she entered the hospital to take care of a non-life-threatening kidney condition to the moment she appeared at an event honoring Gold Star families, ending the saga. Per The Guardian, Melania spoke for the first time after disappearing for 20 days tweeting that she was at the White House with her family. A week prior, Donald helped the speculation take flight when he insisted to reporters that she was watching them from the White House, pointing towards the window and saying, she's doing great, right there. She's doing great, just looking at us, right there. 
Following the deadly January 6, 2021 riots at the Capitol, you'd think that the former first couple would have taken immediate action. After all, it was their job to comfort the nation in the wake of tragedy. And that they did in their own special way. A whopping 24 hours after Donald Trump gave the now infamous speech that encouraged his supporters to stop the counting of the Electoral College votes and saying, fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. He then tried to smooth things over with a two and a half minute video where he acknowledged future President Joe Biden's win. According to Vanity Fair, this only came after he was accused of inciting an insurrection and faced legal prosecution and impeachment. As an advisor told the magazine, he knew he f***ed up. There's no doubt that Melania publicly stood behind Donald's rhetoric in the past, alluding to the false notion that the election was swung by illegal votes. Following the events, she took five days to collect her thoughts and apparently came to the conclusion that she was the real victim of the Capitol riots. In a now-deleted blog post, Melania claimed that she condemned the riots at the Capitol, but also found time to complain that she was met with, quote, salacious gossip, unwarranted personal attacks, and false, misleading accusations. Mar-a-Lago was meant to be Donald and Melania Trump oasis, or fortress, depending on how you want to look at it. This was derailed when the pair reportedly did not agree on renovations. Needless to say, things may have been quite awkward in the Trump household. According to CNN Politics, Melania oversaw the renovations of Donald's private quarters at Mar-a-Lago. Three days before Christmas 2020, he caught a glimpse of the project that had been going on for several weeks and allegedly was not pleased with it because it did not match his ideal aesthetics. To make matters more awkward, Melania reportedly handpicked many of the details with her interior decorator. Donald allegedly hated it so much that he asked that pieces of the decor, which consisted of white marble and an abundance of dark wood, be removed. Alleged disagreements over decor and aesthetics aside, from the looks of it, Donald and Melania Trump couldn't wait to get to Mar-a-Lago after the 2020 election. The pair were in such a rush to exit the White House that they ended up skipping Joe Biden's inauguration, only to be met with a lukewarm hometown welcome. If anyone was over it, it appeared to be Melania. According to People, the soon-to-be former FLOTUS jetted right to the car as her husband momentarily stopped to wave but not talk to reporters. Donald had 29 minutes left in his presidency when the pair touched down at Palm Beach International Airport. Supporters did not gather at the gates to greet them when they landed. Rather, a few scattered along the motorcade, mixed in with dissenters, holding signs emblazoned with words mocking and poking fun at him. Overall, Donald Trump left his presidency with a 34% approval rating, the lowest in history, according to a Gallup poll. In Stephen Colbert's opinion, throughout his time in the White House, Donald Trump seemed to have perfected the persona of everyone's belligerent uncle that makes inappropriate comments at Thanksgiving dinner. It was all leading up to this one moment, where Donald delivered the performance of a lifetime, as that same uncle who's somehow given a microphone at a wedding. According to TMZ, Donald popped into a Mar-a-Lago wedding of a couple of his longtime friends and donors in March 2021. There, he reportedly hijacked the mic to briefly give a touching speech about the couple before launching into a tirade that touched upon topics like how the election was rigged, how Joe Biden was already doing a poor job, and different deals on foreign policy, and the situation at the southern border. During this time, Melania Trump was nowhere to be found. She did not appear to be his plus one. According to CNN Politics, she has instead been spending a lot of time at the Mar-a-Lago Spa, reportedly avoiding anything that has to do with politics. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nikki Swift videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.